This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. another week of uh, doing whatever it is we do here. Nobody's watching it tonight. Nobody's listening to it tonight. You know, I'm about ready to give up on the whole damn process. I say that all the time, but I'm getting closer and closer. Okay. Uh, But what the hell, you know, Uh, well, we'll get along as we get along. Um, We're here until midnight. Uh, That, that being the, that being said, uh, we will be here until midnight, uh, taking your calls, uh, g- getting the citizen panel together. Uh, our friend, uh, he always warns me when he's not going to be calling the show. Uh, Phil uh, wrote me, and he can't uh, can't do it because he's having dinner with Amy and her husband, so he can't uh, call us. Oh, what the hell? He's in Texas. He's in some kind of convention for rugs. What do, you, what do you care? What do you know? Anyway, uh, let me see here. Uh, anything I, I got to talk about in particular? I do have a lot of this stuff I want to talk about in particular. And uh, we, we're not going to go to an interview or anything like that right now. We're going to talk straight on to you up there. You know, sometimes I'm looking down here because I'm having to look at stuff. Uh, uh, but... Uh, uh, let's see here. Wait a minute. Hold on a second, Damien. Are you having a problem? You can't get it into the piece. See, this is, I have to do this and that. Okay. Uh, oh, I see. There's some kind of problem here. Hold on a second. Let me, let's quit this. Let me, come on. Damn it. Oh, oh, the whole thing just crashed on us. All right. Hold, hold on. You can see my hand here, right, folks? Just uh, stick with me for a moment here while I uh, take care of some business of getting things going uh, and uh, uh, everything should be fine in just a moment here. Uh, uh, Okay, yeah, that's right, fine. Let's let the iTunes start up here. If it ever does, I don't know, I'm having... Damien's having having problems, so I'm trying to solve them. Oh, fuck everything. Yeah, yeah. iTunes won't start. Oh, let me go over here. I'm over at the other microphone now. Let me force quit it. Let me see here. Oh, what the hell? Let me see here. Okay. Does that start up? No, it doesn't start up. We're having a problem here. Oh, oh boy. I, I, I hate when this happens. Okay, well, I'm just gonna have to reboot the whole damn, did he put his, uh, his show on here? Does he have his show in there? Yeah, it's, no, it's not there. Oh boy. Um, I have no idea what the problem is here, folks. Uh, bum, 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 bum. Let me see here. Force quit. Um, iTunes. Force to quit. Okay. There we go. Quit. Force quit. Okay. Now it's starting again. Is it starting? Oh boy. Well, I don't know what's happening. But uh, I am I am frustrated by this whole thing, folks. I really am. It just you know, uh, I'm I'm tired of doing this. Um, okay, Damien, if you're listening, I've got to reboot the machine. You uploaded the file to the folder? No, you didn't. Uh, so uh, it's not uploaded to the file. No, uh, no, no, it's not. And I've got to start the whole machine over again. Okay, restart. Oh, 
Okay, restart it. All right, here we go. For some reason. Uh, you know, um, no, it didn't upload. So uh, um, you're going to have to put it, uh, if you can, put it in the, uh, uh, the what do you call it, the, um, um, thing, you know, that we have, the Dropbox. Right, the best way to do it. This thing isn't even shutting down. Come on, shut down for crying out loud. Restart. Oh, I gotta stop this. Okay, hold on a second, folks. You, you, you know something, this is, this is why I just hate doing this. It's gotten to the point where I just, I just, I just dread it and hate it. Okay, so we'll let it reboot and then I'll uh, get back to uh, to uh, doing whatever. And you see, I would love to do a show here, but unfortunately, I've got to I've got to make this thing work. Oh boy! Uh, in case you're listening, um, uh, Damien, um, you're. you're uh, uh, I'm having to reboot the machine, and you did not put it in the folder. It did not go into the folder. There's something wrong there. I don't know what's wrong. But if you uh, put it in the Dropbox, I think you know how to do that. I'll I'll take care of it later. Um, mm. See, this is what I'm talking about, folks. It, it's just not worth it to me to do this. Uh, I, you know, I mean, here I am trying to do a show and then the whole thing is broken and so I got to fix it because somebody else has to get on the air and that's the nature of what goes on here. And if I had some kid, for instance, who was uh, taking care of all of this in the background and I had an assistant, that would be fine, but I don't. So when the network breaks down right in the middle of us doing the show, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm stuck. Okay. So what the hell, you know, so you're going to have to excuse me because in a couple of minutes, I'm going to have to go back over there and, and get things uh, going again. I'm waiting for it to all boot up. So I'm stalling here, which is not, does not make for great radio or great television. Uh, but I hope you don't mind. Okay. Now, there we go. Hold on a second, folks. You know what I can do? I can actually, I, I actually didn't think about this, but I can actually go over here, okay? And so I can cut over to here, see? And you see me over here trying to fix the whole thing. There we go. I put the mic up that, you know, and uh, no, I don't want any updates there. Um, I don't want that either. I want... Uh, uh, to take care of Google Chrome, come on, quit. All right, all right. Now, here, why, why are we, why are we not? Uh, there we go. There's iTunes, and the, here goes uh, the encoder. So we should be okay now. Let's see here. The exchange. Let's see, do we get his, uh, his, his, his uh, folder? Yes, we got your folder, Damien. It's there, okay? Uh, the exchange folder is there, and so I will then take it and put it into your, into your slot. Uh, and there's just something that you know, went wrong with our, uh, with our stuff here, so. We're okay now, and uh, remove from playlist. There we go, remove from playlist, and we're ready to go. Okay, we're all okay, thank you. Okay, just wanted you to know you we're all right, you know. And um, also, I, uh, oh, now we're having problems with the, oh no, we're, oh, no we're not, no we're not, we're fine. Okay, now let me uh, come back over to me here. There we go. Ah and turn down the other mic so there isn't a lot of that. And hey, you see, now that's what happens. That's when you're running a network all by yourself. So listen, if there's a kid out there who wants to be my assistant, who would like to come in every night and do some of the technical stuff, 
so that I can just pay attention to doing a show. But you realize I just spent the last 15 minutes having to solve a pro or last 10 minutes having to solve a problem. And I had to do it here on the air, uh, which is disgusting. <laughs> okay. All right, I got stuff to talk about, so let's talk about it. And I was and I was gonna I was all full of piss and vinegar tonight about talking about what I want to talk about. It goes back to something which we've been talking about a lot. I think we probably talk about this more than just about any other topic because quite frankly, it's the one that bothers me the most. And that's been this uh, witch hunt that's been going on in this country that passes itself off as a woman's movement. And uh, I'm calling it a witch hunt because that's entirely what it has become. You know, women have been treated like shit in this country ever since I was a kid. And I, in my lifetime, have done everything to treat women, and, and not with, uh, not with uh, obedience kind of respect or respect because I was trying to be the nice guy or even respect because I was trying to get laid, okay, which is a reason why some guys say, hey, I'm all for the women's movement. I'm all for that women's lib. Now let's fuck. Um, no, I have just I've always been that way. And it was because I had good upbringing. I had a father who was a real gentleman and he, you know, he never thought of women as subservient or secondary to him and he always taught me to treat women with a great deal of respect and 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 caring and uh so i have done so all my life uh i don't think i've ever made a woman feel particularly uncomfortable because i may have uh, uh, come on to her uh, there is that mating ritual that takes place. You know the mating ritual I'm talking about, where you're going out with somebody, and at some point during the evening, if you like the person, if you don't like the person, you don't do it. But if you like the person, you kind of make the move to take the relationship to a, a second level. You know, go in for the kiss. And that's always the most awkward, always was the most awkward moment for me. Because I wouldn't do it unless the woman shot up a flare and said, kiss me. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, that, but that's the way I always was. And so I've never, uh, never felt women were subservient to me or should work under me. And when I've had them working with me and I like, uh, I've had news women, for instance, who work with me, I've always tried to make them an equal in the show. You know, to the point where usually people would refer to, like, Lori Thompson, who was my newswoman in San Francisco at Live 105, as my, um, as my, uh, my, my partner, you know, as my, um, not as a sidekick particularly, but as my, one of, as Alex and Lori, you know. And in fact, at one point, when I, um, uh, got a new contract at the station, uh, I said, there is just one thing. There are two things you've got to do. I will not sign a new contract with you until you sign a new contract with Lori. Now, by that, I didn't mean that she's got to get a contract too, so I keep having her. I, I said, you've got to sign another contract with Lori, and she is going to dictate her price. And I gave her bargaining power to be able to ask for whatever she could get out of them. Because I said, I will not sign a contract till I know hers has been signed. And, and, and that's how I treated women who were working with me. And, and yes, I was, I did have the upper hand in that kind of situation because I was the star of the show and uh, that's the way it was. But I, I remember that specifically, and I told Lori, I said, now look what I've done is I've told them, I'm not signing a contract with them, uh, and they want to sign one with me with a lot of money. I said, but I want you to get just, I want you to get your just desserts, so I want you to have negotiating power. Otherwise, you don't have negotiating power, and I told them I wouldn't sign mine till you signed yours. So go in there and get what you want to get out of them, and they'll probably go along with it. And I, I think, I don't know how much she got, but because I never asked, but she got a lot more than most people working as a newswoman on a morning show would get. 
that's how I, that's because that's the way I felt about women who worked with me. Um, I always felt that uh, uh, whenever I could, I would give a woman a, a leg up to try and do better in her, in the workplace, uh, and use my power to get it done. Uh, so I, I say that, and I don't want any pats on the back for it, because I was only acting as a decent human being should act, okay? So I'm not telling you this to say, oh, you know, uh, I'm, I, you know hey, I'm, I'm, I'm the friend of the black people. Look at what I did to a, for a black person. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm, I'm, I don't want any thanks for it. I only did what was right and what was decent, okay? That said... I've got to talk to you about this whole thing now. Situation happened in the last uh, uh, 48 hours, maybe a little more than that. Uh, there is an actor by the name of Aziz uh, uh, Ansari. Uh, Aziz Ansari has a show called Master of None on Netflix, and he just won a Golden Globe for, I think, the uh, male, uh, you know, best male actor in a comedic role at the Golden Globes. And what that did, you know, uh, it happened to James Franco, too. James Franco won an award for the best actor in a, in a, in a uh, I think it was supposed, I think it was a comedy, uh, because I think they consider that film a comedy. But anyway, uh, uh, both of them suddenly uh, get attacked uh, because they uh, won these awards and they were wearing a button that says time's up or whatever that button says. And, uh, oh, you can't say that about him because I remember when he goosed me or I remember when he tried to fondle my breasts or whatever. So first Franco gets it. And Franco goes on an apology tour, which was rather pathetic. Rather than say, you know, I really don't remember it, you know, and if I did something to make somebody feel uncomfortable, I'm sure, surely sorry about that, but I don't remember it that way. How I And he did say how he remembered it was a, you know, one of those uh, um, events where both people were equal parties in the situation. But whatever, forget Franco for a second, because, but, but he, won, any male who won an award at that show, practically, was being held to account all of a sudden. You know, well, how dare he wears a Time's Up button? Well, maybe he wants to wear a Time's Up button. Maybe he feels terribly guilty and he wants to make amends. It's possible, you know. Well, anyway, Aziz Ansari, here's the story. This woman, an anonymous woman, she uses a phony name on a, on a site called Babe, I think it's called. I, I, I can't remember what the exact... Uh, name of the site was uh but she starts writing this thing about how could he wear that me to that that time's up or whatever button because uh, when he when I, I i and then she goes on to tell this story about how she met and they they met at a party and uh he at first didn't want to have anything to do with her. He didn't, either he didn't find her attractive or he just didn't like her. Or maybe he got a bad vibe or whatever. But she started talking to him some more. And then they both no, noticed that they both loved the same old camera. Now, I don't know what that's about. But, you know, they found a common agreement for something. And um, they... Um, um, uh, one thing led to another, and they exchanged uh, phone numbers, okay, and agreed that when uh, when they were both back in New York or whatever, they'd uh, maybe get together and have dinner, okay? So uh, comes New York, and Sari uh, takes the phone number, texts her, says, how would you like to have dinner? She says, fine, right? I'd love to have dinner with you. And then she tells the story about how she was getting ready for the date. She couldn't figure out what to wear, and she wanted to wear just the right thing because she kind of, you know, I guess liked the guy, you know, or wanted to impress him. And she talks a lot about putting the makeup on and all of that. And then she says they go out to dinner, and they eat dinner rather fast. Uh, and he then says, would you like to go back to my place? And she says, uh, sure. Now, let me say this. 
<clears throat> in the dating dance that goes on, when one says, would you like to come back to my place? Uh, your answer should be, well, let's wait till the next time we get together. If you feel that you don't want to be put in a compromising position. But instead, she said, oh, yeah, sure, let's go back to your place. And they went back to his place. And uh, she, she mentioned to him what a nice counter he had uh, uh, in the kitchen. And he lifted her up and put her on the counter. And he then kissed her or something to that extent. And he wound up uh, finally going down on her, uh, which apparently she, didn't, she wasn't resisting that. And um, then uh, at, at a certain point, she kind of said, well, I, 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 just, I don't feel comfortable with this. And he said, okay, well, let's put our clothes on and just sit here and watch television or something. And they did. They put their clothes back on. They sat there. They watched Seinfeld. Uh, she left. Uh, apparently, everything was fine. The next day, being a true gentleman, Asari writes her a text and says, uh, th it was a, I, I had a very nice night last night. I hope it was nice for you. Now, let me see if I can find what she wrote back. She wrote, um, um, uh, uh, let's see here. Uh, she said, uh, upon, uh, she, uh, and sorry, adds, I got a text from her saying that although it may have seemed okay, upon further reflection, okay, she felt uncomfortable. It was true that everything did seem okay to me, so when I heard that it was not the case for her, I was surprised and concerned, and I took her words to heart and responded privately after taking time to process what she had said. Um, now, it, it, this is a case of the mating dance, okay? And, and perhaps a failed attempt. Uh, also, I think Ansari probably learned a great lesson. If some woman comes on to you at a party because you're on Netflix and you got a series, maybe it's best you don't take her up on it, okay? Because this is the kind of, uh, of person who is looking for something. And if she doesn't get exactly what she wants, she's going to get something else. Now, I don't know how long ago. This happened back when it was Emmy time. So that would have to have been, I think, last October, probably. It happens just before the new season starts. Uh, yeah, it said it in uh, October. Uh, uh, and, and he said that, uh, you know, that was the last he, he heard of her until she puts this thing up on this, on this Babe site, the Babe Report, it's called. And... and um, it allowed this woman anonymously to tell this story and to perhaps ruin Ansari's career. Now, it seems like he's coming across kind of, people are, getting, are sympathetic towards him. They're beginning to say that this kind of behavior is ruining the credibility of the Me Too movement and now the Time's Up movement. And when I read this, I... I was incensed. I was incensed that he even has to, to answer to this. I'm sure he was being a very nice guy and a gentleman. I mean, when she said maybe she wasn't interested in having sex, he said, well, let's put our clothes on or get our clothes back together and let's sit here and watch some television. And that's what they did. And then she left, and the next day she said, I felt uncomfortable. Uh and um, um, he heard nothing from her until finally she writes anonymously to the rest of the public this story. Uh, what a cunt. Can I say that? What a cunt. And that's giving cunt a nice name. I mean, what a, I can't say bitch. Oh, boy. What can I say? What a terrible human being she is, you know? Because in this day and age, you accuse somebody of something like that, and chances are the bottom falls out of their career. And no telling what's going to happen to Aziz Ansari. Um, he said Ansari. No, uh, uh, after this, 
But let's hope that somehow he comes out on the good side of this. So far, Netflix hasn't suddenly said, well, we're, we're going to stop doing business with him and whatever. But this has been going on a lot lately. These anonymous name, people telling stories that are then going around and ruining people's careers. And I, I just... It just, it really, really bothers me to the core. I really think that what this is all about is, 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 is McCarthyism all over again. And I have just decided that I'm sick and tired of this whole Me Too movement. The other day on CBS Sunday Morning, Oprah Winfrey, right, who is an employee now of CBS, did a roundtable discussion for about 10 minutes with uh, some females from Hollywood, Hollywood shakers and so on. Reese Witherspoon was there. Uh, what's her name? Shonda Rhimes was there. Uh, uh, that the woman from Blackish who was kind of started the whole uh, Time's Up thing going was there. And they were all sitting there discussing what's going on. And what I heard was pure, unadulterated hatred. Hatred of men. It wasn't, it, what I, I didn't get the feeling these were women who had been hurt and they wanted to talk about their incident and, and how it affected them personally and, and allow everybody to know why these kind of things bother people, bother them and so on. No. It was just uh, what I heard was unadulterated hate for men. And I found that to be just, it, it, it made me feel it, it, terrible. It made me feel hurt. It made me feel uncomfortable, as uncomfortable as any of these women might feel by Harvey Weinstein coming on to them. Because, and Oprah was the ringleader in this. And she's just ginning it up and getting them to... And I'm sitting there going, and everybody's going to sit here and say how wonderful this is. You know, how, yes, we have to do this for women and so on. Now, I totally agree that nobody should ever make another human being, male or female, uncomfortable. Nobody should use their power to get some kind of sexual gratification as a result of that power. But on the other hand, I think this kind of lynch mob that I saw on Sunday on the Sunday morning show was disgusting. And it was horrible. And what I saw and suddenly realized between that and what happened to Aziz Ansari and a few other people that it's been happening to all along. I mean, uh, take... Um, um, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, the uh, the comedian. Uh, oh God, my mind is just uh, uh, a blank now. But he lost his shows on FX and and on uh, uh, um, uh, all the all the Fox networks, and he lost uh, uh, specials on Netflix and Louis C.K. and he lost all the all this stuff, and then all of a sudden. FX says they had an internal investigation and found that under their watch and under his time at FX, there was never anything improper that went on. You think they're giving him his job back? Do you think everybody's saying, well, we're sorry? Well, the, the problem was that he did admit that he did do things early on, but that was before the FX stuff and everything like that. But FX hasn't offered him his job back. He just said, oh, well, you know, I guess we found you didn't do it. Oh, okay, good. Now it's, his career is ruined, all right? So I've come to the conclusion that we as men, let me give you one other thing here before we, uh, we go on. Where was that? Oh, yeah, somebody else who got given a bad time. Uh, this one was uh, Matt Damon. Okay, where where is it? Hold on a second. Uh, and that's the thing about I'm sorry. Where is oh here's Matt Damon. Here we go. Matt Damon 
goes on uh, television this morning, the Today Show, and he apologizes. He admitted that he made mistakes with his recent comments on the subject of, the, of sexual harassment, saying during an appearance on NBC's Today Show, I really wish I'd listened more before I weighed in. Damon apologized for his comments, telling Kathy Lee Gifford, I don't want to further anybody's pain with anything that I do or say. He said uh, many women involved in the Time's Up movement are his friends, and he supports their efforts to change behavior. Uh, nothing that he, noting that he wants to uh, go along for the, for the ride, he added, uh, but I should get in, in the back seat and close my mouth for a while. Matt, you're a pussy. Matt, you have nothing to apologize for. If you felt at the moment that what was being said and what was being done was improper, then you, you, and you said it, why are you now suddenly just, oh, please forgive me, I'm sorry I said that. I mean... Are you saying you're sorry you said that because you're afraid it will affect your box office, it will affect your career? Or did you say it originally because you really meant it? And, and so this is the kind of thing that's happening with guys. They're, they're apologizing, they're kowtowing, they're, oh, I'm all for the women's movement. Listen, I was for the, uh, before it became the Me Too movement, because Me Too, when it became a hashtag, that's when it started to fall apart, okay? But prior to that, when the Weinstein things were happening and people were starting to come out and talk about it, uh, that was a, one, a good thing, a wonderful thing, a big seed change. But when it became the Me Too movement, then everybody wanted to say, oh, I got the same thing happened to me and this happened to me and that happened to me. Listen, I think it's time for guys to stand up. And I think it's time for guys to take a stand. And to say this is full, this is this is bullshit, okay? Uh, you know, I'm a good guy, uh, you know, and you're grouping me in with everybody else. Oh, I don't understand, you know. Um, I understand and I empathize, but I don't empathize with making people lose their jobs because you anonymously wrote something on some blog somewhere and nobody knows who the fuck you are including the person you accused you know that's wrong that's terrible that's mccarthyism that's what went on in the 50s that i just i just to this day i recoil from it had a major effect on my life um so when i was uh, a few years ago as a joke uh, uh, there were th three of us. There was uh, there was Bobby. Well, four of us: Bobby Slate and me, uh, a guy who uh, uh, Howard, uh, a guy by the name of Howard, um, who works in the oddly enough in the porn industry. Um, and uh, there was one other guy. I'm trying to remember his name right now. I'm just I'm, I'm very get, I get very bad on names as years have passed. And the four of us all about the same time got fucked over by women. Now, when I say fucked over, I mean fucked over. I mean, uh, if I got a bunch of guys together and I said, tell me a story about a woman who fucked you over, yeah, they'd all have a story about some of them. And usually in the, in the, these, in the case of us four, they, these were situations that broke our hearts, okay? I mean, that, you know, if you can imagine Bobby Slate and, you know, you go, hey, Bobby, Bobby, can't, how do you break Bobby's heart? Very easily, very easily, okay? Uh, and, and all these other guys. So the four of us formed a little club, and we named it after something out of the Little Rascals. If you remember the Little Rascals shorts, which uh, was originally our gang, okay, before it was the Little Rascals, all those shorts that were the, the our gang comedies, when they went to television, they simply called them the Little Rascals. The, our gang group, they had a, a thing, Spanky and Alfalfa and all of them. The guys had a thing called the He-Man Woman Haters Club. 
And so we called ourselves the He-Man Woman Haters Club. And I think if you people, if any of you listen to me in, in San Francisco, you remember the He-Man Woman Haters Club. And it was because we had all been so brutally hurt by women that we just thought we would have a certain unity with each other. Of course, we all fell by the wayside because I got a girlfriend and uh, another one who broke my heart. Uh, and another guy got married. I think two of them got married. So eventually, I mean, Bobby got married. So eventually there was no He-Man Woman Haters Club any longer. But I think it's time to reopen the He-Man Woman Haters Club. I think it's time for every guy who's ever been hurt by a woman, that's ever been go had to go through a lot of pain because of his love for that woman and the way in which she played him for the sap that he was, uh, start start coming out and writing their little me too kind of things, uh, and and so I am uh, here once and for all uh, proposing that we open uh, for operation the He Man Woman Haters Club, and I'm I'm planning on being the president of this. I think it's time for men to say, okay, enough is enough. You know, this dialogue has been a one-way dialogue. Uh, the, 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 people, the women involved in this aren't willing to listen to a discussion about what's going on, and they don't even want to admit that there is a uh, natural part of all of this, which is called the mating dance. And they, what they want is they want to do away with the mating dance. Well, then nobody's going to get married and nobody's going to fall in love. I mean, if I were in the middle of all of this right now and I had a radio show and I was doing really well with it, I don't think I'd go out with anybody, okay? I mean, I would be that frightened that some nutcase would suddenly decide that I had been improper with her. Improper? Listen, you know, I mean, hell, if somebody wants to sleep with me, I, let's do it. Okay? All right? Okay. Anyway, I, I'm just so tired of this. And, I, and, and when this thing with Ansari happened, and when I saw these women on the C CBS Sunday morning, that was it for me, you know? And I said, it's time that we guys started saying, no more, that's it, no more. It's over, it's done with, we're not gonna put up with this any longer. And I think this woman who went after Ansari did more to, to destroy the women's movement than any single person. And I think if you women out there can find out who the fuck she is, I take her out to the closest tree and lynch her because she did not help the women's movement in this country. And whatever good was coming out of the whole Weinstein thing, the minute that hashtag Me Too hit, we started getting into a lynch mob. And that's where it fell apart. And I, I just think it, it was terrible. I think it's terrible. And I think that uh, um, um, guys, just we got to say that's it. We're not going to put up with it anymore. Now watch how many, how many, how many people I lose as uh, uh, people on my website, to, on my Facebook page. <laughs> watch that. Because women will go, oh, I don't want to have anything to do with him. He doesn't agree with I look. I'm all for what women want, okay? I'm all for it. I just don't think the methods of going about it are particularly correct. I think that they take on the patina of a Salem witch trial, and I just don't think that's right. Um, you know, and um, what about the guys who, you know, somebody was accused, and he apologizes, he says, I'm sorry. I really am sorry. I didn't know I, I you know, it was another time. Whatever the excuse is, but I'm sorry. Do we not, do we not uh, go along with, with, with people uh, apologizing and, and trying to change the way they are? I don't know. Anyway, I, I am, uh, I've, I've gone too long with this thing. And I, I, don't, I don't know what to say. Anyway, I'm going to open up the lines. And if women want to yell and scream at me, I'm here to be talked to. I'd love to hear from some women who want to talk about this. 
But um, the women that usually call this show have not called since the first of the year. So I, I don't know what that's all about. I didn't say anything over the Christmas holidays that would have upset them. But people like Renee and Charlene and uh, who else? Uh, uh, there are quite a few. They, I haven't heard from them. This is nothing but guys call the show right now. So, so I may as well start the He-Man Woman Haters Club because it's all guys. Anyway, the lines are open, and if anybody wants to call and talk to me, I'm, I'm ready to listen to you, and um, we can have a little discussion here. But who knows if anybody's going to call, because I've been talking forever. Uh, so I'll sit here and wait. Oh. Mm. Or maybe I won't sit here and wait. I'm sorry, by the way, that we had technical difficulties at the beginning of the show. But I had to take care of them because they were eh, they had to be taken care of. That's all I have to say for it. Um, so I'm waiting for you to call. What am I going to do? Just sit here? Uh, let me see here. Uh, anybody? No, no. I, and I'm I'm I got the lines on. Everybody should be getting it. Vernon Nunn has a birthday today. Happy birthday, Vernon. At least that's what it says on my, on my uh, um, uh, gabnet uh, on Skype. So anyway, uh, so anyway, I'm waiting for somebody to call. I don't know if anybody's going to call tonight. This is weird because I, I've been going long. I went long on this. And so now it, uh, people should be tuning in to, to listen to it. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, if you want to call us, uh, all you have to do is use Skype and call GabNet Live. Now, if you want to find out exactly how to do that, go over to GabNet.net. And over on the right-hand side of the page is a whole, like, tutorial on how to, how to use Skype, where to get it, how to get it. It's very simple. And then you can call me. And if you disagree with me, call me. It, uh, oh, hey, look who's here. Well... Hey, Scott Boddicker, for crying out loud, speak of the devil, where the hell have you been? We haven't seen uh, you. Turn I'm surrounded by women, so I have to... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> where's my camera on this? Yeah, I got the new... Can you see me? No. No, I can't see. I just, we just I have... I have the new Skype, and I've been having technical brain dysfunction. I've not been able to get in very well. Really? Yeah, so... It, Where's the camera? Here we have a nice still picture of you. Uh, it, anyway, but uh, I'll, I'll look for it on here. Yeah, yeah. So how you been? Huh? How you been? Oh, I've been okay, but I wonder what happened to you. N now, let's figure out how we how we can get your Skype working. Uh, I, don't you have that really, camera icon there? Uh, oh, I know what I did wrong. I Skype. I called in on a on an audio instead of a video. Oh, okay. Let me let me back okay. out and hang oh. me up, or I'll call back uh, in. Yeah, I'll, I'll hang I'll hang up That's on you. That's what I did wrong. Y yeah. That's let me see here. Let me uh, let me hang up on you. Yeah, that's what it is. What you did wrong. Okay, so he'll call back in a second, and also the rest of you can uh, start calling if you want to. Uh, here, let's see if he uh, if he calls us. Um, he, he, he had people quotes on their on their uh, phone, right? And his says, "I told uh, I'm too old to stay up this late," is what he says. Okay, there's Scott. There we go. Now we see you, Scott. There Very you good. go. Yeah. I, a, What's with you? Wait, wait. My my Skype. I've, I've lost the uh, uh, call in button on the uh, Safari. Or on, on the gabnet.net, so I've had to come in through the back door through Skype. And I never knew how to do that. And I thought, I didn't want to do it when you had a lot of people on, because yeah. you know, I don't know how it messes up uh, the flow of the show. Now, we haven't seen you since, what, last year? Yeah, yeah, it's been a while. Yeah. So, what has happened to your hair? It's getting longer. Can you see it? Yeah, oh well, yeah. You yeah, you, you look like a fucking hippie. <laughs> Well, just maybe a hippie. I'm not fucking. You, you know what it looks like? Like I know we're talking to you in Texas, and it kind of looks like you're in, uh, uh, like you're in the old west. You got the vest, you know, and you got the the hairline and the heck beard. What's wrong with this? There it is. Yeah, it's well, it's it's cold down here, so you have to wear many layers. Really? 
Yeah. Oh, okay. All righty. Uh, you got your hat on, so well, maybe I, could, I should put your hat on. Well, I mean, I could take my hat off. You know. <laughs> oh, God, put it back on. <laughs> yeah, the, <laughs> yeah, you people with hair. Jeez. Where are the people with no hair tonight? Well, Jones. Huh? Bill's supposed to be flying to uh, Texas tonight. No, he's he? in Texas. He's in Texas tonight. He's yeah. he's having dinner with Amy and her husband. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. You know, obviously he'll be paying. Uh, you know, that's why they always want to eat with him when he comes to town because he picks up the check. I, yeah. Yeah. Now you see, he should call you. You'd be fun to hang out with. I'd really enjoy yeah. hanging out with you. I, you know, it's nice, uh, you know, Phil's a nice guy, but it's always nice to know you have that option of hanging up the phone. <laughs> <laughs> when, once he pushes your button too many times, it, rather than, you know, uh, yeah. walking out, you know, it's just, okay, got to go, boom. Yeah. Yeah. Well, is anybody else going to call this here program tonight? That's the question. Are we going to, is it going to be the two of us? Boy, will that be exciting. Oh, Great. very boring. So what have you been doing, Scott? Well, well, my daughter's been in from uh, college. She went back to college on Monday. Yeah. So we've been sitting around watching Netflix and, you know, just enjoying each other's company. You know, I watched more Netflix in the last uh, two, three weeks than I thought possible. But what did you watch? Well, you know, I, I did. I finally finished uh, Breaking Bad. I, I went through that whole series. We, 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 you know, we, I'm, I'm way behind on my series, you know, but. But yeah, Breaking Bad, and we watched. Uh, well, we, then we watched something on HB, HBO, um, um, Big Little Lies. That was good. Yeah, yeah, that won I all thought, kinds anyway. of awards. I don't know. It's it, it, it's kind of girl stuff. So I don't. It was. It was. Yeah, but but uh, you know, and and uh, but it was interesting. I thought, but you know, just a lot of TV, a lot of, a lot of yeah. not doing anything useful. Yeah, well, I, I finally now, I've just moved into the guest room. Uh, I went and I got myself a, a 4K TV for the, for, the, yeah. for, the, for, the, for the guest room. And uh, then uh, uh, today, finally, it came. I, got, I, have a, I have a sound bar that I bought, and I bought a surround, wireless surround sound for the room. So now I've got surround sound in in there with the beautiful picture. I never have to come out of the room. I mean, except to do this show, and I've even built a second studio in there so I can probably do it from in there. <laughs> do, it, do it from Yeah. Studio B. Yeah. Yeah, Studio yeah. the Studio B. That's right. That's what we should do. We put a sign up there saying Studio B. Um and we've been joined by Jeff Hello, everybody. Did anybody hear the whole thing I was saying when I came on tonight? I did. Yeah. What'd I you, did. What did you think, Jeff? I don't know. I'm, uh, I, I agree with what you say, but at the same time, I think it's, it's the time where we're going to lose on this thing. Well, no, it, 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 we're going to lose if we don't stand up for ourselves. And I think that, you know... Men are, uh, let me put it this way. What I saw with Oprah on Sunday was women at war against men. So, you know, I think that if there's a war, we've got to stand up for ourselves. You know, because there are a lot of really nice guys who wouldn't think of doing any of this behavior. Uh, and uh, I'm sorry. I just, I, I just think that we're being... Uh, typecast okay if you will you know and i think that's wrong and i think that we got to stand up for ourselves that's all yeah. i think there's some people who believe in your perspective and honor it and want to use it and 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 it's good tv these days yeah but uh uh, you know, if you if you if you talk to a woman one on one, it's a little different than when they're in a group. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They have a little different perspective from that. Uh, maybe they also have more guts as compared to what they used to have. Well, uh, 
You know, I'll yeah. tell you, I have always, uh, I've always liked and appreciated what I call self-assertive women. Women. I always liked a tough woman. My father used to refer to them. He used to use the term uh, broads, and the reason he used that term was he said he thought the term broad was a very positive term because it meant a self-assertive, take charge woman, you know. And um, in fact, uh, Betty Davis, I think, used to call herself a broad. Uh, and and he used her as an example of, of the true broad, um, and, and but I I've always liked the very self assertive uh, women, uh, who I, quite frankly I have enough trouble taking care of myself. I don't want to take care of somebody else. I want people who can take care of themselves. I want I want to have somebody who's uh, on an equal par with me that way, and I don't want somebody who's going to be subservient to me. And I don't think I I, I don't think I'm an odd ball. I think I'm, uh, you know, I, I, I look at, at Scott and I think Scott's probably a really decent guy when it comes to women and his, his attitude and treatment towards women. Hell, he's got enough girls climbing in and around him, uh, with his kids and, huh? You have to be, you have to be nice. Otherwise you get beat up. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, I just, but I'm just tired of this. If, if, if you saw this thing on Sunday morning with, with Oprah Winfrey, it yeah, was like, huh? It was like, I didn't see it. Yeah. That. It was like, um, it, it was a hate fest, you know? And I saw women who weren't saying, Hey, you know, I've had bad experiences and I just don't think anybody else should have these kind of bad experiences. Instead, they had this kind of vitriol that was almost a hatred of men and of any man who might have power. You know, there are a lot of guys who have power who never wield it, you know, who use it for a lot of good, who have given people a hand up and brought them up the ladder, you know. I mean, where, where, where's the praising of the good guys? You know what I'm saying? And I just, I just find it, I, I just find that it's maybe time that we said, fuck you, enough is enough already. You know, I don't, we don't, we don't need to, we don't need to have this hatred going on that seems to be going on. And this tip of, you know, this, this typecasting of men as all being the same. You know, all you guys, how many times you heard women say, oh, you guys are all alike. I mean, we're all alike. I think there's four guys right here now who none of us are like the other one, you know, uh, except we all do have facial hair. Uh, you know. so, yeah. so, I mean, I, 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 it, it, it's not that, you know, I just, I just, I just feel that it's, it's what's happening is just, it's crazy. And, and what's happening is all these guys that get accused rather than stand up for themselves. I mean, Aziz Ansari is, is not apologizing. He is simply telling the story as it went on, as he remembers it. And uh, most people are sympathetic towards him. They, they don't like the idea that this woman is anonymous and that she suddenly decided now to write this thing when it you know happened months and months and months ago. Uh, and some of these women are coming forward because it happened a couple of years ago, and then accusing guys of stuff they can't even remember it. You know, I mean, and then you're not supposed to say, "Well, she's lying." Be why aren't you supposed to? Because that's that's not letting believing women. That's how all women are are uh, put aside by by saying that they're lying. Well, you know, there are some women out there who lie. There's some women who lie because they want to get even with somebody, you know. And and so, do we accept their lie because we don't want them? You know, they the women have been told they were lying too much. We gotta no. We got we we have to have people take account. You know, okay, so you're saying that happened to you? Show us your proof. You have to prove it, just like I would have to prove it if I said that you know you did something to me. Nobody would nece necessary, but everybody is taking this also on face value. A woman comes forward, says this guy did this to me, and that's it. Boom, boom, he's had it. Nobody questions whether she's lying. 
you have to prove it, you know, like if you go to court, you have to prove it by, you know, by law. But these ladies but, say, no, well, no, no, he, is, he did this it, and that. It's even a question it. of proving it by law. It is, it's a question of th that we, that we're forced to accept anything a woman says about a guy right now because if we don't accept it, that's what we do with all women. We dismiss their claims of having been raped or whatever. And that's, that's not the point. The point is you still have to be held to account just like anybody would. Would you not agree, Jeff, with that? I agree. I agree. I didn't ask you. I asked Jeff. My, when, you, when you said that uh, you mentioned the part about where women used to, well, often uh, they used to get raped. And they would go to the police. And they would not be believed, and, yeah. And they would not get uh, due diligence, let's put it this way. Uh, they they kind of blew them off. Yeah, no, right, away. right, exactly. So yeah. there's no proof, forget it. And I think, I think women knew about that, oh, oh, uh, whether it was yeah. a rape. Uh, you know, that's an extensive uh, 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 problem, but... But even smaller differences be, between uh, a man and a woman, uh, people at work or whatever. And I think women realized for years and years and years that they were not uh, on an equal peer right. with men as far as arguing about things like, like sex or uh, rape or business relationship or office or who knows what other things and I think it, it's their they feel like it's their turn to get back to the equal center and more okay yeah but, they but kinda, oh they're their owner oh. they own it and they're obviously taking care of it. Here we go. We're going to be... You're also using it, right? Right. We're being joined by a woman. We're being joined by Charlene. Who's oh, hi. Out there. Yeah, hi, Charlene. How are hi. you? How's it going? Are you there? <laughs> uh, no, she's, uh, she, had, she wanted to turn a light on so we could see she was there, her. She's gone. I don't know. It didn't make it any better. Yeah. Well, oh, <laughs> well, my light is bad. <laughs> oh, well, it doesn't matter. It gives you kind of a... What anonymous. We, uh, anonymous look. Yes. Now you can. Oh my God! I now see you can. What you mean about Scott's hair? Now you can it's talk so, about all. So different. Yeah, you can talk about all the men who have uh, assailed you. Uh, no, oh. here's where where you. I think it's different, Jeff. Uh, when we're talking about rape, we're talking about violence, and we're talking about a, a, cr a an actual crime. All right, uh, a terrible crime. Uh, and women were not believed uh, in those cases in, for years and years and years. But here we're not talking about rape in a lot of cases. Sometimes we're just talking about he pulled out his penis, you know. And we're, we're, we're and and we're we're not asking, you know, when the woman says I was raped, she goes to the police station. She shows her identification. They know who she is. Now, she may be allowed to be anonymous as the case goes forward, which is good because a lot of people would not want to talk about it, right? But uh, this whole anonymity in some of these cases where guys' careers have been ruined because of an anonymous charge by somebody that isn't rape. You know, it, it's, it's tastelessness. It's a lot of things like that, but it's not rape. I just think it's a different thing than the, than the rape thing, okay? You were going to say something, uh, um, uh, Mike? You there? Mike, can you hear us? He doesn't have his head. Oh, oh were you, you were going to say something earlier, Mike. No, uh, I didn't. Oh well, but you were, and then I. But I was going to Jeff. I asked Jeff the question, and I went. I was going to come back to you. I didn't hear it. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, anyway, 
uh, uh, yes, um, uh, Charlene. Um, I don't know. Am I changing anything if I say I heard that there's something going on with Woody Allen again or something? Or is that the same thing with his? Well, they, they're bringing up the Woody Allen thing because Dylan Farrow, mm -hmm. uh, um, his daughter. I, 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 is that his blood daughter? Or is that one of the step kids? I saw a picture and she started to resemble him now. I think. Because I hadn't seen her in years, you know that happened a long no, but time now, ago. But was she an actual daughter? I mean, was was she yeah, the sperm the donor in that case? Because you know, it's Mia, no, they had adopted. Mia they had Farrow adopted was going kids. around the world collecting kids like they were butterflies, like Angelina yeah. Jolie. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I thought it was, I thought it was Hall. What? No, that's Annie Hall. He's thinking of Annie Hall the movie, right? Yeah, you got to start. You got to be. Uh, want want her to make a movie. No, what it was Dylan. Are. Her name is Dylan, right? Her name is Dylan Farrow. Uh, but, uh, and okay. she's accused him of, of improprieties, and several actors... But she were, said he didn't do it, though, I heard, right? He said he, Nancy, did, he, said he didn't do Nancy. it, but several actresses, uh, including uh, Mir Sorvino is one. I saw a whole list of them uh, today. Oh, are saying that Woody went after her? Uh, no, are saying that they won't work with Woody. Oh, oh, okay. Because of the uh, because of the accusations of Dylan Farrow. Well, you know, again, uh, that's f in, in some cases. I mean, prove it, but that's family stuff, you know. And uh, who knows? Can I say this? Who knows how much Mia Farrow poisoned those kids against Woody? Right. Right. Because she's she's a nutcase in and of herself. All right. Um, she adopted most of those. And most of them were adopted first. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. She was uh, like married Soon to Yee. the other guy. Yeah. Andre Previn, or was she married? Yes, to? Andre Previn. But uh, no, Soon Yi. That's how Woody. A lot of people think that's horrible because it was his adopted daughter with her, and then now he's with her still, right? Soon Yi. So, his yeah. adopted daughter. Yeah. I think I don't think he adopted Sunyi. I think actually Andre Previn did because she was named Sunyi Previn. But he just lived with her with Mia, and that's how he kind of met her. Yeah, yeah. And then they fell. He fell in love with her, and right. he married her, They're and they and, and married, they've been married right. for twenty years now. But she's upset me over that. She's very. He was very upset over that. Oh, of course, she's very upset yeah. about it. But you know, I mean, um, um, and then it started that they started saying Dylan had been abused. And then they, they used to think Dylan could have been coached or something, you know? Well, you know... I I'm, remember all that. Yeah, but, I remember when but, that happened. But they're, they're coming back now to, to say, well, we're not going to work with Woody, you know, because he was he did this to Dylan Farrell. Well, again, you know, uh, uh, he has uh, on numerous occasions said their lies. The police have investigated it and come up with nothing. Right. Okay. So all of a sudden, these people are saying, well, I'm not going to work for him because I'm blah, 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 you know. Um, I don't know, you know. But um, I was saying this the other day, and I'll say it again. I guess Cosby isn't looking as bad now, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we've forgotten, we've forgotten all about Bill Cosby. Right, right. I know. And then uh, I heard Michael Douglas brought up again like last week or something but everyone knows michael douglas had stuff he, they've been saying that about him for years how about his father he, you know there, there are <laughs> oh, stories that, I, that thought, he, I thought of you alex when he came out did you see how bad he looked on the golden globes i mean well come he, on he's 101 years I old know, and I, had I a can't stroke believe. god bless him no god bless him he's still with us because i mean he's God he's bless really him. He's still with us. That, uh, from what I hear, that son of a I'm bitch. I'm with you. He uh, raped Natalie Wood, and I love. Well, Natalie I mean, Wood. Uh, don't say it as a fact, but well, it is. Yeah, it is said that say. he did, right. and uh, I have a tendency to believe the story. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, but it was terrible. He couldn't even talk at all. Really, now, I mean, he hasn't been able to talk for a while. But you know. It was well, sad, you know. Well, he's 101. Come on, what do you I want? We're joking. He is 101. <laughs> You know, right, right. I mean, it, it, it. Hey, you know, that's what 101 looks like. Wow. Yeah. But what happened with Harvey? You know, Weinstein, the guy that was really. Well, you know what? What's thing. interesting? No, but it, no, but no, it. but it's interesting. He didn't start the whole thing. I mean, if you think about it, there was Cosby. You know, well, he was there was Woody Allen. 
There were a lot of other situations before Weinstein, but somehow the Weinstein thing is the thing that made it catch fire. So that a lot of these people that had this happen to them before Weinstein are kind of giving a, given a pass. Right, right. You know? But um, I don't know. It was so weird, uh, that that whole uh, Golden Globe thing. And, and now they say the academies, right? Like, what are they going to do? They have to top the Golden Globes, so we have to wait to see what they're going to do. Well, about all, it. it was like a Me all, Too. All I right? know is if I, were, if I were an actor right now, I don't want to be nominated or win Best Actor at the Oscars because I'll be, <laughs> I'll be called out for something right. by some woman who I can't even remember, you know? I mean, it happened to James Franco with the Globes, and it happened to right. Aziz Ansari at the Globes. Mm-hmm. I couldn't remember James Franco's name the other day for some reason. <laughs> I don't know why. I just I, I saw his face, but I couldn't remember the name. Well, I, I, it's funny. It, it, to begin with, there's a great difference between James Franco and Harvey Weinstein. If Harvey oh, Weinstein you, right. came on onto you, you'd want to vomit. <laughs> but if James Franco did, you'd go, well, let me see here. <laughs> <laughs> you know. name is kind of like Al Goldstein trying to go after you, like you know. <laughs> now Al Goldstein never, never, ever did that. He, he was, simply bought. He simply bought hookers. That's all he did. Oh, he wasn't a perv. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I so far as I know, he was probably less perverted than I was. You know, so I. I <laughs> So you know, um, I mean, is there an elephant in the room tonight, Alex? That we could mention, or what elephant in the room? Um, shithole. Did you guys talk about? Well, you weren't on yesterday. That isn't right? an elephant in the room. That's uh, no. d- dung in the middle of the room. Because it's like shithole, and now I heard it's like shit, shit. Uh, oh, shit house. Yeah, it, it wasn't shithole. It was shit house. They're saying. And I'm like, what's the, you know, like there's a difference. The fact that we are having, the fact that we are having a national discussion about this. Over this, this, right. (laughs) Is pathetic. I know, it's not really funny. It's it's sad. You know, it was really funny. It was really funny. The other night they did a, they did a thing on, you know, on Saturday Night Live in their news about the whole thing. And they said shithole. They did, which, and everybody went, oh, that's funny, you should hold. But earlier in the show, uh, the guest on the show, who was a Sam Rockwell, yeah, said, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know, I, you know, they, they, they do have a delay on that show in case something like that happens. Nobody caught it. <laughs> I, I think Oops. It was with, like, supposedly two kids and a doctor. <clears throat> the guy on TV is a scientist who's showing them stuff yeah. and everything, and the kids are fucking up, and he goes, we stopped that, we stopped fucking doing that, oops. And, and then he just kept going on, and the whole audience just started <laughs> breaking up. But it went out, and it went out, it went out live, right? Coast to coast. It, well, something? it went out live coast to coast because on the West Coast now, they Saturday Night Live is live. They start oh, running right. it at 830 at night. So it went out live as well, and nobody caught it. So you, the other day, I'm, I, I said, you got you to gotta see this to girlfriend. And I went to Hulu to watch it. And by then, NBC oh, they, had they gotten to it and bleeped it. Up. it. Yeah. <laughs> bleeped it up. What, what is amazing to me is the lengths we go. We have whole people hired on these shows to sit there with a button that they never, ever have to push, okay, waiting for somebody to say fuck or shit. The F-bomb, they call it now, right? Yeah. yeah. yeah I just, Drop the bomb. Yeah, I find that amazing, you know. Mm-hmm. I find that amazing. We, 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 we are, we're children. We're just children. <laughs> No, it's getting ridiculous with him yeah. and, uh, you know, what he says and the tweeting every day. And then now he says he never said it. And that one senator that you keep talking about with the D, what's his name? Durbin. Durbin. He's, Dick Durbin. Yeah, he's the one now that's the only witness. Now they say they have to, uh, go, He want, they want to hear a transcript of it. Like they want to read the transcript to go back oh, now sh- to see. And that's where they think it's now house instead of hall. No, whoever it, whoever's trying to call us, do not. Uh, I bet it's Tony. Tony, if you're trying to call us using a previous uh, uh, group that we were doing, uh, don't call on that. Would you please 
uh, just simply dial up GabNet Live. Don't do it that way. You should know better by the, now. Shame then, on you, uh, Tony. What? Then the uh, president's doctor says, oh, Trump's in great health, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. With a few uh, loose screws somewhere. No, they gave him, even, no, they gave him a cognition test. Right. I was going to say that, Alex, but I didn't know cognition. I was going to say they gave him a psych test, right? Yeah, they gave and him he, a, He's so proud of himself. He passed it. Yeah. <laughs> Oop he volunteered. Yeah. He volunteered to take it. Hey, Tony, it. did you try and call us using another line? I think I did. You should accident. know better than that by I now. I know. I'm sorry. I haven't been sleeping. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, uh, no, he, he supposedly, uh, to say he's in good health, but he's overweight. Yeah. You know. Oh, he has to watch his sugar and get more exercise. And yeah. what else did they say? Yeah, like he's blood pressure. Uh, well, you know, he said he eats McDonald's like recently. Yeah, the trouble is with all the, you know, I was thinking about this today. Uh, we're take, we take all these different pills to take things down that perhaps we should manage with our own diets and so on, you know. Mm -hmm. But instead, I mean, I'm taking one. I'm taking a statin, and I'm taking a, a blood pressure medicine, and I'm taking a, 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 a thyroid medicine, and I'm taking, a, a, you know, a thing for the prostate, you know. It's, um, but I'm just full. I'm I, I, I'm up to what six pills a month, which Jeff probably thinks I'm a, I'm a pussy about that because <laughs> I don't know how many you're up to. I I just came down. I'm, I'm from nine to eight. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Well, that's good. That's Very good. Happy yeah. Which one did they get rid of? Uh, the blood thinner. The blood thinner? Oh. Oh, not Coumadin or something. Was it that? No, I never. I took. That's Coumadin the worst many, one, right? That's the worst one. I actually had a stroke with Coumadin many years Ooh. ago. Yeah. No, well, well, doesn't bat, doesn't uh, doesn't aspirin thin blood just by itself? Yes, and I and I still have to take uh, baby aspirin. Yeah. But I was taking the baby aspirin and the and the higher power. Why? What, uh, what I don't get is why they make you take baby aspirin and not just. Is it okay if I take regular aspirin? It's, well, it's, it's orange. It's, orange it tastes better. Uh, what? Oh, the size. The milligrams. It's the size. Of, well, I hate the, the size milligrams. of the baby aspirin because I'm always dropping one when I'm trying to put right. them in my pill boxes, <laughs> you know? Maybe because of the baby aspirin doesn't cause too, too much tearing up in your stomach. Well, yes. but neither does regular aspirin that's enteric. True. Yeah. My mother, though, got like an ulcer from the aspirin. I think it's because she was taking it on an empty stomach or something. Really? But uh, she had trouble with that. They told her not to take it anymore, you know. Really? Yeah. Son of a bitch. Oh. Uh, but uh, anyway, so, you know, um, it was, uh, so uh, it, what's what's your take? You're the woman in the group, Charlene. What's your take on what how this whole Me Too thing is going now? Don't you think maybe it's it's... It maybe is crying wolf a little too much, and it's starting to lose its power. Well, you know, when you said it, you know, but it is. It's like a like I guess it's like a bandwagon thing, and it's getting a little bit annoying in a way because every day, you know, well, not every day, but you know, if they mention all these people, and then I don't like the thing about how it goes back thirty years and stuff, and you know, why didn't they say it then? And you know, they come out now, and you know, because. It seems like it's fashionable. And now this led to the Oprah thing, right? Where, uh, you know, Oprah comes out and now, Jesus, wouldn't that be, I, I'm, I'm getting scared. I think we might have an Oprah and a, and a Trump in the next election. I mean, and, and wouldn't that be crazy? I'll tell like, you, it's uh, all reality uh, the, stars. The best, best comment on this couple of weeks ago on a, a tweet was, uh, was Seth MacFarlane who basically said, if we're looking forward to a uh, reality star and a talk show host running against each other for president, that is a dystopian future. And he's right. You know, I what mean... What does that mean, Alex, dystopian? Just, um, what's, how do I describe it? It's, it's, yeah. it's more feeling than it is anything else. Um let me look up dystopian. I've, I know. I have to Google I've, that one. 
Yeah. I'm thinking of utopian, but that's utopian is good, right? Yeah. Dystopian is bad. Huh? Like utopian would be good. Bad dystopian might be bad, like, but I don't know how. Well, let me see here. Dystopian. Come on. Dis. It's like the opposite of utopian. I love the fact that if I spell it wrong, it'll correct it for me. Yeah, I just on Google that. Dystopian. Uh, an imagined place or state in which everything is unpleasant or bad, typically a totalitarian or environmentally degraded one. So it is like the opposite of utopia. Yeah, it's dystopia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But dystopian future. So, you know, I mean... Just think about that. I mean, that we're we're even talking about a talk show host as a, as a as a, as a presidential candidate, and she's thinking about it. Yeah, Alex. You know, remember you always say that Barack Obama came sort of. You know, she was the one that was pushing for him, and you know, brought him. Well, maybe she sat back and said, "Hey, why did I help Barack and all this? You know, hey, I'm a woman. I'm black, you know, maybe she's thinking, oh, wow, I'm going to jump in there now, right? Yeah. And I'll be the first woman. Won't Hillary be pissed if that happens, right? Oh, yeah, that's where she went. Well, like, you know, like you to know, know something? I, 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 that ever happened. You know what we should think about is women who can run for office and would be good. Uh, I'll tell you one that immediately comes to mind is Michelle Obama. I know. I thought the same thing, Alex. I mean, she was such a great first lady, but, you know, but she bright and, and, you know, her I mean, speeches and all that. Yeah. And, and likable and has, all, you know, could be the, you know, a, a, a once I call. I'd rather see her than Oprah. I'll tell you that much. Cause well, I'm I mean, not a big fan of Oprah. I don't know. She, a lot le- of people love her, she at not. least knows where the bathrooms are in the white house, you know, <laughs> right, I mean, right. uh, uh, but I'm thinking about other women too, who could, uh, could, could take the job. Um, uh, I, I was for Kirsten Gillibrand till she did what she did to um, uh, what's his name, uh, you know, Al Franken. Al Franken, because I felt that was that was the biggest mistake I think that they could have possibly made. Uh, the, the Democrat. That was crazy, Alex. That whole yeah, thing. Yeah. I can't believe he stepped down and all that. That was terrible. Yeah. He should never have done that. Hello to Tim. Tim, I think this may be the first time we've heard from you this year. Yeah, our schedule's been. My my son works different hours now, so there's a lot of times he's coming home during your show, and we're we're babysitting the grandchild. No. Oh, so okay. It's yeah. usually kind of hectic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, how are you doing? Uh, I, I know why. I know why Oprah is running. They're thinking about running. It's uh, she has the money. Oh, that's it, right? And and she's she's people have thrown crap her way for so many years. Mm. What what else could go bad? She doesn't have a history of of Trump with Stormy Daniels or anybody. So, well, she doesn't. She um, really you no. Know, she doesn't have there. I can't think of anything in Oprah's past that mm. would come back to haunt her. At least that we know of. Now, when somebody runs for president, people start looking. Yeah, but really but she's had a per, she's been pretty squeaky clean, hasn't she? I'm, I'm trying to think. Yeah. Has she had any kind of, you know? She's uh, still married. What, to what, yeah. Oh, just that they think Gail and her are lesbian lovers. You know, sure. you know yeah, what? She, the worst thing that the Republicans could come up with. She told some inner city kids that she was thinking about building a school in the inner city, but they probably wouldn't appreciate it. So she built one in Africa. Africa. Yeah, that that, 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 that that's how low that they have to dig. Yeah, they, they would have to dig that low. Yes, Jeff, you had your hand up. Oh, well, I was thinking that uh, one of her problems is uh, she's physically uh, not as strong as uh, a president needs to be. Of course, Trump is just the opposite of of uh, that. Uh, he's always been in perfect health. We all know that because he does. <laughs> Every week, and his doctors, I don't know why, what they do, but they say the well, same you know, thing. It, it, I, think probably, it, I think she had a lot of physical, uh, medical stuff that, that might be a problem for her. You think Trump lied about his weight? You think? I bet you he did. People, or, or even the doctor. You know one test they didn't give the results of? What? For Trump? A uh, test for STDs. Oh God, that's a good one. <laughs> Stormy weather. That's a now good you're one. supposed to play. 
pay for it. This place told me. Oh no! Look, it, having sex with a porn star is probably the cleanest way you can have sex. You'd have yeah. a bit better chance of getting an STD from just a date you picked up at a bar than from a porn actress who has to take tests every every like three weeks. But, but they've had their problems, and also. This, this also bolsters the argument in the dossier that he did strange stuff in Russia, which might not have been as safe. Oh, the pee-pee stuff? At the, at yeah, the so conference, they were asking This could be used in a court of law for a pattern of behavior now. No, I have news if for you. Bob, pee-pee is not dirty. Pee-pee is maybe the most sterile uh, liquid that you have in your body. Right. You know, right. You know what would be funny, Alex? They were asking him questions, the doctor, at that press conference. They should ask him, is Trump circumcised? <laughs> they have to answer. That, that's a good one, Tony. <laughs> like Michael that? Jackson, we need pictures of him. Well, that's person. Eight inches or small than eight. Any identifying marks on it or I something. I want to know how his prostate is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, wait a minute, wait a minute. What man his age, he should have prostate. Does, does it, don't most men his age have it? Seven inches, you one. Listen, I got well, it. I got we all it. have prostates. I, I, yeah. I, I got a, I got a. <laughs> I got a bill the other day from my uh, from my urologist for the oh, for the overage or whatever that you know wasn't paid and it was twenty one dollars and sixty three cents. He doesn't take credit cards and he didn't put an addressed envelope in it. You got to send him money, right? <laughs> you know, and if he wants people to pay, figure out some way to make it easy for him. An envelope would be nice. I mean, I'll you know. I'll put the stamp on it. I'll be happy to do that. But at least an envelope. Yeah, you. you yeah, you got to make your own envelope. You got to write the. the you know, just and take credit cards. Make it easy. Okay. It was only twenty one dollars and eighty one cents, I think. But still. You should. Look. I got a question. I got a question for Doctor Ronnie. Yeah. How, how many cognitive tests? Did they have to give Trump before they, he found one he could pass? <laughs> well, they he asked said him. He went through a whole bunch of different no, tests trying to decide. He, I bet you gave no, him here, here, tests. here was oh, one. Of, here, here was one of the tasks they gave him, and I, I started to think about he name as many words as you can think of in a minute <coughs> that start with the letter F. Oh, not repeating. Uh, and not oh, repeating. Kofifi. Is that what he meant, Kofifi? Well, all I was thinking of was, are you still there, Jeff? Yeah. Uh, uh, you, you don't have a picture on you. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Uh, I, I, and I thought about it for a second, and I'm thinking, of, did he say fuck at some point? Did he say fuck? Right, right. You know. Um, well, you could have uh, Mrs. Nielsen, the head of the DHS, come in and tell us what he didn't say, but not remember what he actually said. Yeah. yeah. That, that's, now, the other question for Dr. Ronnie is... Um, did you know Dr. Ronnie let him have his attorney there for the cognitive testing so he could uh, consult with him? Oh, shit. <laughs> and the fact that he was aware enough to know he needed his attorney present means he passed the test. Well, by the way, I wanted to say something about the women's movement for a second. As much as, as critical as I am of it, the positive side of it is that uh, if you think about it, at least we're not talking about Trump all the time. Right, we're talking about that. Absent right? <laughs> the women's thing, we'd be talking about it every minute of our lives. Mm -hmm. I watched Saturday Night Live last Saturday, and you know they used to do their newscast, and they'd have this funny item they got from somewhere, and this funny item they got somewhere. Almost every item was Trump-related. Almost every item. I mean, this man so monopolizes the news doesn't he? At some point, aren't aren't Americans going to be exhausted with Donald Trump? And isn't this going to come back to bite him in the ass? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, he just every day he needs the he needs the attention. Don't pick the baby up. Let the baby cry. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, so, what the hell? Oh, Alex. Uh, Alex, I wanted to say, wouldn't it be great though if they were running together, like the way it was, like a, it was a, like crazy with Hillary. It was like entertaining, although it was sad. Like he, you know, you know, he's going to say horrible things about Oprah, 
Now, what about if Rosie O'Donnell decided she wanted to run? You know how he hates her and he calls her big head? Well, and, you know. but Rosie isn't going to run. Okay. Oh, I know. But, I mean, it would be like that with Oprah. He'd probably, like, start throwing big insults and all that, and you know. Well, so you know, like with, that, no, with you Oprah, know. He, he even said something nice about her the other day. He oh, said, he you know, I, I like Oprah. He says, I hope she doesn't run because, you know, and, you know. I don't, you know, if she runs, it's going to, it's going to hurt her. Because she has this image that is pretty pristine, okay? Once you start running for office, you lose that. Because everybody is trying to... Particularly with Trump. Yeah. Every, uh, unless you're Jimmy Carter. Yeah, unless you're Jimmy Carter. He's about he the was, only one. He will start disliking you, I guess, like because you, you know... Didn't he say something it. crappy about Jimmy Carter, though, too? His brother. <laughs> huh? His, his, his uh, brother. His brother? Billy Carter. No, because I, I um, uh, boy, I'll tell you, I, I interviewed Carter once. What a nice guy. Just, they don't make him like him, you know? Down to earth, probably. Well, I'm Jewish, and if that's what it is to be a good Christian, then I'll become a good Christian. I mean, he's just that good a guy. Down to earth. Yeah, yeah, down to earth and real, you know? It made him. It didn't make him such a great president. Although I, I, I thought he did a gr good job. Yeah, sounds but he to, wasn't cutthroat enough. Sounds to me like you have a cold. Yep, little one. Little one. You didn't get the big one. No, look, give that to everybody else. It just the only symptom is uh, I can't talk. So. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Do you know yeah. that Trump takes Ambien for sleeping? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he only sleeps four to five hours, yeah. and the instructions on an Ambien bottle says don't use unless you're getting seven to eight hours of sleep. Oh, maybe he starts tweeting after he takes the Ambien, and you know. <laughs> yeah, you know, who you know who else took took Ambien was uh, Tiger Woods, but he didn't take the Ambien to sleep. It's, he took the Ambien to stay awake. It's called Ambien with, 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 with Stormy Daniels. So. What do you with this? What do you what do you what are you doing with this whole Stormy Daniels thing? So Trump went out with a porn actress. No, no, no. I, I know. Well, it just means that all, all the other. Th well, that means he was the fact that he had to pay somebody off. May, may, means that he could be blackmailed by other people that know about stuff, including. Yeah, but other what about that thirteen-year-old? Isn't that thirteen-year-old? Yeah, but what, wait a minute. What? What? what, it, what it, they supposedly paid off Stormy Daniels. What were they paying her off for? Her silence, because the whole world knows that they were paying off Stormy Daniels, and they weren't paying her off because, uh, you know, they they went out and had coffee together. Well, well, it killed the story though, because the guys writing the story for whichever magazine couldn't absolutely absolutely confirm everything that he had on her. Yeah, but if if, if you're paying, if, if, if it comes out just that, you know, you paid Stormy Daniels, you know, I think it was a couple hundred thousand dollars or something, uh, uh, doesn't that say that there's something Stormy Daniels knows? Yeah, you're right. No, he was just running for president, and there was, there, was some, there was supposedly several people, and I know there's a second lady that came out in the news too that was paid off we don't know much details about that so yeah well so did you see this is a, this is another item that i uh, that i found today hold on a second uh in what is a very rare case of me doing prep yeah here we go um the fcc is about to get sued uh, and uh, hold on a second. Where, uh -oh. Where's where my glass? What happened to my glasses? Are they on my face? Was it no. the state attorney generals that are doing the, it? Well, here's what it is. Here's what it is. Twenty-one states uh, and the District of Columbia. These glasses don't work. But where's my good? Where are my other glasses? Son of a bitch. Oh God, Alex. Oh, here they are. I are. have like six pair, and I hate glasses. I right? know, but I have one pair that really just are fine, and the rest suck. <laughs> okay. um, and I hate it because you can never find them. Twenty-one states and the District of Columbia filed the first major lawsuit Tuesday to block the repeal of the Federal Communications Commission net neutrality rules. Those rules that prohibited the Internet providers from slowing down or blocking websites. 
New York Attorney General Eric Schneiderman is leading the suit. The report notes that Schneiderman called the FCC repeal of net neutrality arbitrary and capricious and said it violates federal law. The multi-state lawsuit comes just a day after Democrats in the Senate said they were inching closer to votes needed for a legislative measure to help overturn the FCC rules. The resolution aims to reverse the FCC's decision and block the agency from passing similar messages, uh, measures rather, in the future. The resolution reportedly has the support of 49 Democratic senators, along with one Republican, Senator Susan Collins of Maine. So, you know. Do you All think they're going to reverse it, Alex? Do, what, do they have a chance? Uh, well, I mean, you've got you got a legal action going, and you've got them trying to do it in Congress. So, you know, somebody may prevail here. Uh, you know, uh, uh, it's a matter of how good a case they make. But what it's going to do is it's going to put net neutrality on hold. It's going to put that rule ruling on hold, and I think that is good as well, at least for the time being. That they can't raise the prices on all that, yeah. Well, it isn't a matter of raising prices. It's a matter of preference, okay? Mm -hmm. And then today, uh, uh, in addition to that, uh, everybody's coming down on, uh, on Facebook now and mm -hmm. saying that they have made a lot of decisions in the last couple of years. When they first started, they were all about community and about social media and, uh, hey, you know, the little hippie with his thing, you know, and the... And now all they think about is money. How can we make more money? Uh, you know, they've got 2 billion users worldwide. And the advertising revenue for 2 billion people is a lot. You know, you you know. know Alex, I heard you mention that the other day that uh, you think that Zuckerberg is doing something to Zuckerberg. make it more uh, less money and more less advertising. And you know what I've noticed? They are telling me now who my representatives are and uh, somebody in Washington. Do you think that's what it is? He's trying to make it look like it's more of a, you know, not a money-making advertising thing, but more of like a tool for people to use. Or And then because of the Trump election thing and the Russians... Maybe, well, you know, it, it seems to me like it could be that they're they're doing they're they're doing this stuff so they can say uh, we're doing something. It's providing a service for people yeah. as citizens or something, right? Yeah, so they can say we're we're doing something. Uh, but did, actually, did you hear his uh, mentor, Roger McNamee? He was on, <laughs> I think, MSNBC. He says uh, the business model for them to make money for Facebook. Mm -hmm allows for people like Russia, allows for fake news to be spread very easily, and the changes that Zuckerberg is making won't make it any better. It could actually make it worse, because the algorithms are going to give you stuff from your uh, friends and your family more often than the, the general news leads, the leads that come in. Mm -hmm. uh, but then you'll get fake news from your friends and family and believe it even more. So... Uh, there's a. I'll post the article on Business Insider what he says. Zuckerberg is not. He's not fixing anything. Yes, uh, uh, Mike. It isn't told the advertisement. If you don't have our advertisement, it for your you know, something like Facebook. Doesn't that hurt hurt Facebook at all? You know, if you yeah. don't have an advertisement. What do you yeah, mean? He, he, if they don't have advertising, they didn't say they were going to stop advertising. They were going to start limiting it. Dude, they, you know, stock, he lost $3 billion in stocks when he made that announcement. Yeah. But it's not going to fix it. Yeah. Yeah, and it's not going to hurt him. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think but I you lost know, a penny, but I'm not going to go pick it up. You know, like, what, what other social media is there? There's, like, Twitter's a social media, right? Right. There's no ads on Twitter, though, right? Well, I think there are, yeah. Oh, there are. I believe. Okay. Let me look. Well, you, you know, uh, 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 hold on. Oh, boy. Because that made me think, like, oh, I don't, I, Facebook does have a lot of ads compared but, to. Yeah, it does. I mean, LinkedIn doesn't have a lot of ads, right? And, Let me see here. I don't see any ads on the actual, that actual page but if i were to look at uh uh home let me see here no i don't see any ads how does twitter make money right right 
Because the ads do make all the money, right? Let me see here. I don't see. Yeah, to have advertisement to, to keep your business running. Though. Yeah, but I'm trying to. Th I don't see any ads. You can, they pay. You can promote your tweets on Twitter and pay to promote them. Oh, oh that's how they make money. Tweet. <laughs> okay, that's how they make the money. Oh, okay. Yeah. And uh, I do get some advertisements on Twitter, but nothing like Facebook. Facebook has all over. Well, I don't get any on uh, my on uh, my particular uh, you know Facebook page. Not the not the feed. The feed is different. Right. But uh, the page, I don't have any ads. No ads. I think you're there. right. Yeah, they stopped that on mine too. I haven't had ads for the longest time, and I wondered where they went because I started wondering how they were going to make money. But I think that on the normal feed that you have. Uh, right, that uh, that that has it. Now I don't even know how to. Yeah, get where to they the recommend feet. like my friend likes whatever those products are that they're always putting on uh -huh. the fake eyelashes well, with the magnets. Here, here, here or we go. Or... Now on the feed, I don't see any ads. Oh, here I see an ad. Yeah, Sim card. Yeah, I see a couple of ads sponsored, and it says sponsored. Uh, so <laughs> it it has a a sponsorship thing going there. So you know. Uh, yeah, so that's that's how they that's how they make their money. I I just you know I guess what happens is you don't have to make a hell of a lot of uh, uh, money uh, because what's happening is I mean you don't have to uh, uh, sell a hell of a lot of ads because you're charging a rate for a two billion possible viewers for that ad. That's a lot, you know. That's a lot. And what they can also do is probably they, they follow your interests. Because you ever notice that sometimes you'll, you'll get a web page come up and right. then there's some ads on there and it's for stuff you've been looking for recently? Right, right. Because it, they, they can now do that with you. They can, so they can say, okay, uh, Alex Bennett, you run a radio show. You want your radio show to be, so we'll, we'll, we, you'll, we'll send our, your ad to ever, ever put your ad on everybody's page who listens to radio programs. You know, so they, the targeted advertising is there. And you know where that's coming to next? A TV set near you. Oh, no. You're and kidding. I, and I found it was interesting. I, I, I thought that, like, for instance, let's say you watch the ABC app and watch an ABC TV show. Okay? And they have commercials in there because they're commercials. They, that's how they, they make their money. They add the commercials into the... And you can't even speed ahead with them. You have to watch the ads. That's why watching on the internet is uh, based more uh, uh, is is more important. But anyway, here, here's here's the point. I was in uh, Shelburne, Vermont, and I decided I want to watch some TV show that was on that weekend. So I put the thing on. Went to the, uh, the ABC site or the TBS site or whatever it was to watch the show, and all the ads were local Vermont ads. Somehow they knew where I was, <laughs> and that's those are the ads they they ran. And when I went back to San Francisco, I tried the same the New York. New York, I went back same thing. New York ads. Wow, that's creepy. So I mean, they knew it, where you were. <laughs> there's a there is a technology out there that knows who the fuck you are. I mean, I I worry a little bit about even being on Facebook or being on any of these things. Because mm -hmm. where before it was just kind of anonymous, so you did it. I'm sure they know every porn I've jerked off to. <laughs> they've watched it. And they've watched it. Yeah. You know, Alex. <laughs> I, I've seen it too. Alex, you brought that up, and you know, I have a friend, and she said she won't get the uh, what is it, the Amazon? You know, that thing you have that you talk to her. What's her name? Uh, Alexa. Oh, 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 Echo. Sure. Uh, or, yeah. Oh, Echo. Echo or whatever. Yeah. Because she feels that uh, it's monitoring. Oh, you know, all the conversation in the room and stuff like that. Do you Constantly, think that's right? Yeah. That's they, not work. Conceivably, say, right? conceivably, they could do that. I think they're not, okay? Because if if it ever came out, it would be a just an absolute disaster in PR for Amazon. It would not be worth it. I mean, and what are they going to find out by listening in on your conversations at home? Alex, I mean, if Alex, they're that you, desperate. You, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Scott, Scott, what's Scott? It was used in a trial. This this guy had an Alexa, and there was a murder in his house or something, and they really? think the Alexa box picked up the uh, the murder. I never heard of that oh, one. That's, that's a good one. Well, 
Wow. I'll have and, to. And they were trying to get uh, Amazon, whoever it is, Google, to uh, to release their data. Well, you see, the thing is, like on my my Echo, I have it in uh, the uh, the kitchen. I find it's the best place to have it, really, because you no, know, because you can use it as a timer, and you can yeah. uh, you can have it play music for you, and you can do all kinds of things, right? And uh, so I keep it in the kitchen. It's the most convenient place to have it. I'm thinking of getting another one for another room just for the hell of it. But uh, uh, you can use it as an intercom that way, right? I do it with no, my mother like that. Yeah. Yeah, but a yeah. anyway, it, it, it you know, it, it's, but I don't know that it can. Uh, well, in my case, all they it would be able to record is dinner. Dinner's ready, dear. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's about it. I don't do much in my kitchen. I wouldn't want one in my bedroom. <laughs> Dinner's ready, you think dinner. it has, does it have video too that it can like uh you know well they have a video tape? one they have a video one i'm waiting for one that they haven't brought out they said they were going to and it's kind of almost like a clock radio but it's got a screen in it and you yeah, can watch a, that or you can watch a little bit of video and whatever what is it called it's got a, a great name touch something or what is it i don't know but i i do know that i there is a video one however where you can watch tv shows and if you if you have a song that you're playing you can ask it to show you the lyrics while it's playing and, and then they they tell you to use it for kids or something for some reason i guess you know like a yeah. tablet type thing yeah but we you know we really have um it, 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 it's uh I really like the Echo. I mean, I think it's a great idea. I mean, I, I don't put it to full use. If I lived in a apartment where I could change the light switches and stuff, I'd do the whole thing where I tell it to turn the lights on and off. Right. You know, right. you can, uh, you, you, yeah, you, you, it's like the clapper, right? You know, the lights right, on and lights the clapper, on. right. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I can, I, can call, I can call Marjorie on my Echo. I just call Marjorie Miller, and she, it, it calls her. Um, uh, so you you can call people with it. I mean, it 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 they they, uh, they knew what they were doing. Bree's calling from Dubai, and he hasn't. He has more than an echo. I think he has an echo and a dot and a that and it did. Are you there, Bree? I don't think he got connected. Damn it. Hmm. Oh well, because he has an echo. And uh, I, I have to have it so I say Echo in order for it to work, not Alexa, because it's too close to my real name. And somebody might say Alex and she'd go, what? You know, so. I have a lot of trouble with the one I have. I have the Google one. Yeah. And I have to take a class on the proper verbiage oh, or whatever oh, oh, to oh, use oh, with oh, it. Look, 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 at, look at what Bree's oh, got here. Yeah, See, yeah. Bree's got the TV version. And what, oh, that's the one you were talking about, right? Yeah. What does it say about something about happy birthday or something there, Bree? And what's it called, that device? What is that called, Bree? Can you hear me? I don't think you can hear me. Maybe he doesn't have a headset. Yeah, it says various oh. things at various oh. times. It oh, just, I see. It, you know, it, it's like a, I don't know, it just scrolls different things you can ask to get and news items. Do you like it, or does, or does it give you any advantage over, say, just your Johnny Echo? Johnny Cash, it says. What does it say? Johnny Cash. Documentary to, to chronicle something. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, so it's giving the time and temperature in Pittsburgh. <laughs> that's, where it, that's where it thinks it is. Where, yeah. where it thinks it is. And then this is the, I've shown you, this is the tap. Yeah. Oh, a tap that is goes behind it. And, and what does the tap do? Well, the tap is portable. I can take this, you know, into the shower, you know, room. I can't. It's not waterproof. Wait a minute. Uh, you take it. In, <clears throat> oh, oh, I, not in the shower. Okay. I, was right. just I can take it into the shower room. It. <laughs> <laughs> it's portable. You can, and you and it works as a suppository too. Right. Right. <laughs> Uh, and and so you've got the tap, you've got you got an echo, right? Yeah. And you've got uh, you've I've got, got them all. You've got the, the, the so you've got them all. You must be just crazy about that. You love it, right? Oh yeah, I have them in every room. And they're all talking to each other and stuff, right? <laughs> You're talking to them. They're talking to you. I got a, a I got a, a wireless uh, a, a wireless uh, surround sound speakers for my 
sound bar. Um, but what, it, but it's only it's only wireless in this respect. It has like a little tower, small little tower, and that is the receiver. And then you have to wire the two speakers in the back. It's just it prevents you from having to wire from the where the TV set is to the back. But yeah. it's, it's nice. It works really really well. Yeah. So. Yeah, I like anything wireless. Oh, I hate wires now. Well. They have, they have to make everything wireless. You know, I tell you, uh, in television. Uh, I prefer to use wire, believe it or not, uh, wired wireless. microphones. Yeah, because wireless always cause every time we ever use wireless, it's always a problem. Mm -hmm. so there's some interference. Oh, it's out the window now. Huh? Yeah, there we go. There's there's the. It's daytime there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What part of town do you live in, Bree? It kind of looks like you're. <coughs> I live in Media City. Media City. Why is it called yeah. Me Media City? When you get to that part of the room, we kind of lose you a little bit. Yeah. Why is it called yeah, Media? Every, uh, <clears throat> every place <clears throat> here is called a city. So next, I mean, you typically. So we have Healthcare City, Internet City. Um, you know, so the, it's just a way to sort of have things collectively that are around that topic in the same area. Now, I have a friend of my, of my of Marjorie's who's going – to Dubai, she decided she'd go on a vacation to Dubai. Yeah, how it's how great. expensive is a vacation there? No, not too bad at all. Really? Um, oh yeah, much cheaper than Singapore, I'll tell you that. And uh, yeah, it depends on where you're going to stay and you know the things that you want to do. But if you know what you're doing, uh, you can have a very nice vacation and not and and not cost too much. Again, it depends on where you stay. You you have everything, you know. It depends if you want a three star or a five star. But I will tell you this: uh, many of the three star hotels here are similar to four or five star hotels in other places, uh, simply because all the stuff is pretty pretty brand new. Yeah. So. So, uh, but uh, but uh, she told me that uh, there was a. Um, um, uh, that that uh, that they give her a whole there's a whole sheet they gave her of rules and regulations. You know, like you can't yeah. you can't wear a dress well, that doesn't that shows your knees. You know. Oh, uh, women. Well, women Alex, I told you about this. Yeah. I, I you know I told you about this before. You know, it's it's very modern. It's when you get here, you know, you you can be lulled into a sense of, you know, thinking you're in the West. You know, but you're not. And so yeah, it's a good idea to know those things. Right. Um, one thing that really gets me is when I go to Dubai Mall and, you know, that's the main main mall here near the Burj Khalifa. And invariably there will be people who sort of come right off the plane and go right there and they're dressed so inappropriately. It, you just mm. know it. And then there'll be people coming in. I saw a group from Italy the other day and they just have their cameras out and they're just filming everything everywhere. Yeah. And it's like, oh, oh, oh. You know, if one local, if one local or one Saudi decided they didn't like being in your camera, you can go to jail for that. Wow. Wow. Really? They could just say, you know, if one person says, "I don't want to be in your camera," they can call the police, and it can make a big deal of it. Now that doesn't wow. happen every day. Do they use the term in happen. in your camera? If you take a picture of somebody, yeah, you could get in huge trouble. But but when you but you use the term in your camera, right? He did say that. I heard him say. Yeah. That. Why do they use the term in your camera? No, I'm just saying that. Oh, oh you're uh, just saying you know. that. Oh, okay. Yeah. What do they in do? Other words, do they, they, oh, sorry. They don't want that. They don't want their image to be captured and collected by you. Is that a so, mus Muslim thing, like a Muslim religious thing? Uh, I don't know. Maybe, but it's just a thing throughout this region. You. Don't take people's pictures without their permission. Sort of like the Amish people don't like that or something. Yeah. Okay, so if you're Maybe. listening, girlfriend, call your friend and tell her not to take her camera. <laughs> no, you can take What, what do they do to you, though, in Dubai if you do that? They waterboard <clears throat> Again, you? Again, somebody has to complain. They torture somebody you or complain. something? No, no, no. Because remember that kid no, in come Korea? On. Come on, this is Dubai. They, 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 yeah. they try to be as, as, as Western as they possibly can for the business. Because that kid in Korea, look what they but, did to him for pulling down the poster, right? 
Yeah, but that's, that's well, North Korea. Oh, because because it's Korea, right? Sorry, North I Korea. That. Yeah, they probably find you, probably. Yeah, and oh, uh, they make you delete it, and you know. Now, is there? A, let me ask you this: Is there a death penalty in Dubai? Um. Yeah, I think we. Yeah, we have that. Yeah, it's rarely uh, there. But we have a case recently of a uh, British expat who was the editor for one of the local newspapers many, many, many years ago. But he still lived in the in the you know, Dubai, and he is accused of of uh, killing his wife, and they are seeking the death penalty for him. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. <clears throat> so that's an unusual. It, what is case the form of execution there? Oh, I don't know. I don't. You know, I, I, I haven't heard of them using it uh, any time recently. Yeah. You know, so I guess it's like the states. Except Texas, right? <laughs> but no, show me where else you can't take pictures? Um, Westworld. Oh, yeah? This is <laughs> Eastworld. No, I think it's the marketing for Dubai. They don't want any bad images of, of the area sent out at all. So they they it's want a political, it that's political. marketing. All pictures must be good for marketing. <clears throat> yeah, but but it's it, it it borders on totalitarian. But you do tactics. you do have I read I re heard mm -hmm. somewhere Disney I think does that too. Like sixty minutes or whatever that there was a story about poverty in Dubai that that there are a whole bunch of people that go there to work. That there's slave there's slave type labor there too. Um, I, you know, I'd be careful with that. I, you know, not, how about not necessarily uh, the, Chinese, slave, but the Chinese building uh, the the railroads in the U.S. So, what would you consider that? Yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, so, indentured uh, servitude is what I would call it. Yeah, no. So it, but is there a so, is there a poverty problem there though, because of the foreign workers? Mm, uh that's a really tough question to to answer. Um, you know, you I see it all the time. I mean, even in my, around my workplace and here in the apartment building, you have uh, you know maids from the Philippines and and uh, you know if I get a different angle here on the photo, you can see buildings being built. Yeah, and a lot of those are built by you know Bangladeshi construction workers. Um, but look, hey, they're, Chris, they're I got a question go for Bree real quick. Yeah. Oh, Bree, have you ever been on a cruise ship? No. Uh, anybody else has been on a cruise ship? If you really want to know why it's they can do it so cheaply, visit the servants' quarters at the bottom of the ship. Yeah. Then you'll kind of know the kind of pictures that the Dubai doesn't want sent out, anything that's not flattering. Well, you know, the thing is that they're free to go. I mean, they're not holding them here against no, their no, will. No, I no, I, I know that, but people have to have jobs, and people are free to leave the cruise ship. No, too, I mean, Dubai, were, Dubai, right, Dubai, Dubai, under yeah, terrible yeah, conditions. Yeah, 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 but Dubai is, a, is, I think, a fairly nice place, and the people who run it are pretty nice. Am I right about that, Bree? I mean, I, I You're that. absolutely right. If yeah. it were up to me, I would make the leader of Dubai like the head guy for all of the Middle East. And then I think there would be a lot, lot better things yeah. if he were in charge. Because he, he and his third son are definitely the best leaders around. Who is that leader? What's his name? Uh, it's um, Mohammed bin Rashid, Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. So he's the uh, vice president of the UAE, but the ruler of Dubai. I was reading something in one of the newspapers yesterday, U.S. newspapers. It was funny because they were talking about Dubai, and they're like, it's the largest emirate and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, no, it's not the largest. Abu Dhabi is. I, I often read uh, things, you know, in the world press that are just wrong about here, including, um, you know, they, they think Dubai is a country, you know, but it's really just it's a state and a city, you know, within the UAE. But a lot of people forget that. They yeah. just know Dubai. Thank you. I thought it was a country. Thank you. See, we there, learned there, something. You there, see, it, 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 you, you get educational there. credits for this show. Hey, well, listen. When I in Singapore, there, 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 there's, our, there's, our, there's our wonderful theme. Thank you, Mike, for being with us. Thank you, Jeff, once again. Thank you, Tony. 
Thank you, uh, Scott. I call more, will you? Now I, we love having you here. You know, I miss your face, and now you're getting to look like some of from the Wild West, and I love that look. <laughs> Charlie <laughs> Martinez, and of course Bree from Dubai. Thank you. Oh, there he is waving good. He, <laughs> there he is waving Dubai. 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 Anyway, <laughs> hey, thanks, <laughs> thanks, <laughs> thanks for the call. Um, Everybody, why don't you big, give, give a big wave goodbye to everybody, okay? So they can, yeah, that's good, because they we want them to be able to uh, uh, see you waving goodbye while I turn on my camera. There we go. See you later, guys. Let me turn off everybody here. Uh, first, I have to do that, and then I have to do this. I have to get all these things ready, because there's a show coming on right after us, and that is, of course, a very simple show that is a lot of fun to listen to called The Intersection, and that will be closely followed by Connections uh, at uh, 1 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And don't forget, well, not tomorrow. He's not on tomorrow night, so I can't plug uh, Damien Chaplin and The Intersection, uh, but uh, and The Exchange, rather, but uh, uh, every night at uh, 9.30, except for tomorrow night, uh, The Exchange is here with Damien Chaplin. Chaplin. Oh boy, I'm just a mess tonight. That, that's it for tonight. It's Amy and Chaplin. Um, uh, what am I going to say? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, see you tomorrow. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, yeah, tell her I love her, okay? Bye.